All right, so welcome to a night hacking interview at the JavaLand conference. I'm joined by Andre Almere, and we're going to talk about the new Java desktop JSR. That's right, Stephen. Which sure. you're busy working on. So that's, that's really awesome that you're, um, you're back doing desktop JSR stuff. Well, frameworks. actually, I never left the desktop. Uh, well. But uh, yeah, so doing web applications on mobile is all the rage in the last years. But let's face it, the desktop is still there. It's not going to die. It doesn't matter how many toolkits pass by. People still need to write desktop applications in one way or another. Yeah, exactly. And um, it's cool that this also spans different frameworks. So what, what Java frameworks is this targeted at? for your desktop API? Well, the, basically the idea for this JSR is to provide a set of APIs that allow, will allow a developer to write an application on targeting the desktop the, without really taking too much care of which particular your toolkit. This means mm -hmm. that if you love JavaFX, and if JavaFX does the work for you, then you can use it and make use of these APIs too. Cool. But if Swing is the one that you must use because, I don't know, it's perhaps there are more components, so there are other libraries that give you a far better user experience, then you will still be able to use that particular UI toolkit and also make use of this JSR. Uh, previous attempts for creating a desktop application framework only targeted a specific UI toolkit. And we want to avoid this. We want to be more open. We want to be more welcoming to other communities, which means that if it's Swing does the work, or JavaFX, SWT, or something else that might come in the future, then we'll be ready for that. Cool. That's awesome. So let's take a look at your computer. You already have the JSR website? Yeah, this is our website. Here. Uh, which, uh, by the way, is open for a bit. Well, you can see on the uh, URL, it's hosted on GitHub at the current, uh, current time. So anybody can cool. fork this website and add more documentation, if that's the case. We're using a one very cool uh, format that is called ASCII-Doc. And as a matter of fact, we're going to have a session on ASCII-Doc later. We are. We yeah. are. I yeah. think you're going to join Dan for that one, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's very easy to add content to this website. and. I really like the format, and you will see this format uh, writing up in other, in other websites and then also other specifications. Turns out that the CDI 2.0 specification also uses uh, ASCII-Doc, ASCII -Doc. and they kind of have the same uh, workflow. So if you want to contribute to a JSR, the, perhaps the, uh, the easiest way is to uh, help us bring uh, more information, more content into the website itself. And of course, you're more than welcome to join us and discuss the JSR, the specification, and perhaps even join the expert group and, and help us drive the APIs directly. Nice. Cool. So um, what, what's currently going on for, the, for JSR 377? What phase is it in? So we are still in the early stages. Uh, the JSR 377 was voted uh, to, well, yes, it was voted to, to give the green light in February of this year. Uh, the expert group is almost final in terms of its formation, but people can join the expert group at any time during the lifetime of JSR before it goes okay. final. That's a good thing. So you don't have to be in the, it's in the start, uh, but you can join it at any time. In the, uh, so we're still in that phase where we have almost a good number of people participating in the expert group, mm -hmm. and we already have the first discussions of where we want the API to go. Uh, one of the, th the things that we like to do is uh, harness the knowledge that was created in the previous attempts. Perhaps people are more aware of what JSR 296 is. Was that the Swing application? The framework? Swing application framework, exactly. Yeah. Uh, this framework only targeted Swing because at the time was perhaps the main toolkit. Uh, JavaFX did not go public yet. This was yeah. back in 2006. No, I remember. I think I was using that right before starting with betas of JavaFX. <laughs> <laughs> Back when it was called F3. Yeah. Uh, so it provided a, a nice set of features, but it's only really just a small set. For example, it provided uh, um, a localized resources, uh, so it was easy for you to define in uh, resource files or properties files uh, what will be a, a, a string formatted uh, icon definition or maybe it was a gradient or a color or something else. And you wanted these uh, literals to be transformed into the right types, mm -hmm. be it an icon, an image, 
uh, some other kind of resource and be injected into the view or any other component that had the right annotations. As, I, as a matter of fact, I believe this idea of using annotations for injection resources began before the JSR 330, which is dependency injection, came around. So, so you, you think the desktop guys got it first? Yes, I mean, <laughs> there are many things out there in the Java space that you own to swing. Believe me, desktop application is still important. Even though we are not in the limelight, we're not in the spotlight, uh, there are many uh, APIs and ideas that have been uh, born out of the need of building a correct and really well-behaving desktop application, and hey, happens to, to be also useful for the server side. So is um, JSR 377 a proper superset of the old Swing application? It, it will certainly be. Uh, so we will provide the same set of features, which is, uh, will be um, a mapping within actions. So it will, should be very easy for developers to define what an action is. Uh, whether there's a controller that's going to be an owner of an action or you're going to have controller-less actions is still to debate. Uh, resource injection, as I mentioned, dependency injection. We cool. now have access to this JSR, yeah. so why not use it? Leveraged on top of the dependency injection JSR. Exactly. We don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time when a new JSR gets created. And the last and not least is the, there is an application lifecycle. So every application goes through an installation phase. There comes the startup where all the components get realized and there's a ready or main phase where the main window or the top components uh, appear. And after a while where the application is, is ready to, to quit, then the shutdown phase comes in. If you happen to um, deliver an application inside an applet or web start, you may have an additional phase, which is the stop phase. Because you know, in applets, uh, you can stop an applet and then restart the application yeah. for the previous step. So this is important for us to, to keep track. So what I'm saying with this is that we will keep these features, but we also add new things that we believe are missing. For example, centralized error management. This is a really nice feature that no matter where an error may occur in your application, you still can have access to, to a particular exception and do something about it. Maybe it's popping up a dialog that tells the end user, oh, an error occurred, do you want to report this and submit an cool. issue directly to an issue tracker? That's very popular in most applications. Yes, yeah. or you simply say, well, something happened, we cannot do anything, do you want to save your current state and then restart the application? Yeah. Or maybe it's just logging something. So it, the uh, the possibilities are endless. Once you know you so, have so a you know single the, you know the way we this. handled this on my on my first big Java application, it was a um, a very early IDE called Sheets that I was working at, at the university. And um, back in the Java one one days, we had a little dialog which would pop up. Yeah, it would tell you what happened, and it had a nice button there that said, "Oh well, <laughs> <laughs> things happen." <laughs> yeah. So yeah. this is one of the things we want to do. So we can do slightly better now. Yes, that, that's the idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we'll see. That's, that's what we want to do. We also want to uh, be very close to a particular UI toolkit, which means uh, it's very unlikely that we're going to put a bridge on top of, or an abstraction over uh, all UI toolkits. So there's go not going to be a button class that you have to use, and somehow that magically gets translated to a specific, I don't know, JavaFX button or Jade button in Swing. No, that makes no sense. Uh, also, we are not going to provide something uh, related to properties, because okay. there, has to, there. there has to be a jab for yeah. Java Beans properties to, oh, if that comes out, they mm -hmm. will certainly leverage. That makes no sense to duplicate efforts. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we're going to have a lightweight event bus. We're hoping we can reuse the same one that is coming up in CDI2. Because CDI2, as far as I understand, it's a spec that is going to be broken down into a smaller pieces. So we'll be able very to, easily to be able to consume that. that. To exactly, without to having to bring a whole CDI container. Why we don't want this? Because the name of the specification says it's desktop and embedded. Yeah. We want to be able to build desktop applications, but also allow developers to use the same ideas to be able to build uh, applications that run on embedded devices. Anywhere where Java SE or Java Embedded can run, you should be able to use these APIs too. Cool. All right, so that's awesome. So if folks want to get involved, again, where should they, where should so, they go for more information? So the website is, uh, right now, we're probably going to change this once we pick a, a suitable do you, name. Do you have Zooming turned on on yours? No. No. 
Okay, uh, that's fine. No, no, I can do that something better, which is will be copy this, put it here, and make it bigger. Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah. So this is the website, and because it's hosted it's, it's on GitHub. It's partially obscured by. Um, oh, there you go. Because it's on GitHub, you can find it on this um, organization, if I'm not mistaken, github.com, JSR377. Nice. This, you will see the project for the API, the spec, the project for the uh, test compatibility kit, and the project for the website. Once we decide uh, what are we going to do with the reference implementation, we will probably host it here, or because we already have, uh, let's say, source materials. Uh, for example, there's the Griffin framework, DataFX, Eclipse 4, NetBeans, there are a few other uh, frameworks out there that already implement many of the features that we would like to see in this JSA. It may be the case that one of these frameworks becomes the reference implementation, mm -hmm. or we create one from scratch. Cool. Sounds good. So thanks very much for the interview here at JavaLand, and I look forward to our um, ASCII doctor. Yeah. Interview yeah. Tune later that on. for tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. Cool. Thank you.